Hey, Happiness Carpenter here. I, I'm just laughing. If <laughs> this video gets made, it'll be a miracle. I'm changing everything I'm going to say, uh, bouncing around in the office here, and um, let's just talk about it. Let's just jump right into it. This is what happened, okay? I got this pair of boots right here. This is the 8833. Bought it from one of you nice guys uh, on one of the Facebook groups. I love this. The 8833. The Red Wing Mock. These are all Red Wings. Hawthorne Abilene Mock. Okay? And I'm thinking, Hawthorne? Well, I got something Hawthorne. Yeah, Hawthorne is right here. <laughs> the, the the Hawthorne Mule Skinner. I, I had the resold on the Dr. Soul resold. So that's not, of course, the original Iron Ranger Soul there. Okay? That's a beautiful thing right there. I love that. Um, but this is the... 8083, 8083, 8833, okay? And I'm like, wait, Hawthorne and Hawthorne? Look, that ain't right. I mean, right, you know, one's Hawthorne Mule Skinner, Hawthorne Abilene. So I started thinking about, let's look at all of the Red Wing Rough Out leathers that I have. And I started researching it, and somebody said they're, working for the SB Foot Tannery. I don't believe it. Uh, SB Foot Tannery is the tannery that was in Red Wing, Minnesota ever since the beginning of Red Wing. And Red Wing was sourcing all their leathers through them. I think it was in 85 or something like that. Red Wing finally bought the SB Foot Tannery. So some of the guys, I, I got some uh, belt, uh, belt matching my gray mule skinners. I got a belt matching my, oh, it's not here, the copper rough and tough which is, as you know, my favorite leather uh, from, I think, North Star Leather. And so some of the guys buy from there. I went online, SB Foot, Tannery. Didn't have a lot of information at all. Just kind of like cover page, home, and a couple of videos on processes and stuff like that. So one of these guys claimed to work for SB Foot, and he was saying that one was a new buck and one was a rough out. So let's talk about types of rough out leather or okay before i got into the boot thing anything that was leather that was fuzzy you know we called suede well suede is a split leather so what they do is they split the leather and and they get the fuzz from the inside you know they split it in two and it and they comb it shave it whatever you know they they, they make it look fuzzy so it's a thinner leather it's great for leather jackets stuff like that new buck which you'll see a lot of shoes that aren't in this heritage boot world may ha say it has nubuck leather. What nubuck leather is, is it's a, a regular, the outside of the, the regular type of the leather, like a leather shoe, and they kind of sand it and, uh, and and raise the some little hairs on it and, and make it kind of mate or seem kind of fuzzy. That's what nubuck is. All this is rough out, okay? There's no nubuck, there's no suede with any of these Red Wing boots, nor most of the other boots. There is some CF Stead suede. CF Stead is one of the tanneries that makes some really nice suede. I think I had that on a pair of J. Crew Kenton Pacer boots that I had. It was actual um, suede. So, but all of these heritage style boots, the kind of boots that I've been showing you in all these videos and the collectible boots that, uh, that, that we're all into, who are, you who are watching these videos, it's a rough out leather, okay? I looked inside every one of these boots. I got seven pairs of pair back here. So ooh, look at those. <laughs> I got, th th they're all smooth on the inside. So this is all the outside of leather. This is all rough out. So what I have decided, okay, sorry. So, so yeah, that's what, that's what, so that's what one guy said in this, one of those Reddit chats or whatever is that, um, one of them was a new buck and one of them was a rough out. That's not true as far as what I can see here. Um, there's no, if, if it was new buck, you would look inside and see the fuzzy part. And then this would be the smooth part that was just kind of sanded to make it like a rough or a rough out. So it's not that. Um, sorry, looking at my notes here. I got extensive notes today. And then um, I, I read another thing that said it was the nap according to length. Like... Uh, that the Abilene was a longer nap than the Mule Skinner. These three are Mule Skinner over here, by the way. The blueberry, the gray, 
and the the Hawthorne. Th these are the mule skinners, and this site over here is Abilene. Abilene's a town in Texas here in the United States. Um, mule skinner is somebody who takes the skin off a mule and uses it for something, I guess. Um, but uh, as far as I can see, I got you know I got one boot here. Look at that. That one, you can see that. Look at that. That one's super fuzzy. That's that Hawthorne Abilene. And then here's a, a Loden Abilene. That's super, super smooth. So I, I don't entirely think that's true either. Um, but what I'm going to say, and this is the conclusion I've come through this silly day and a couple of days I've been having trying to research and figure this out and get these boots out and compare them, is that Hawthorne Hawthorne, Mule Skinner Abilene, Obviously, the mule skinner has more stuff. Okay. Oh, here's what another guy said. Sorry, in research I found. They said that the mule skinner is waxed, like with beeswax or, you know, like a waxed, uh, a, a, a waxed rough out. I, I don't think that's true either. Um, the guy in the video I watched said it seemed kind of waxy. They don't seem much different to me. But what I have, let me back up a, a little bit. If anyone out here knows and can correct or add information in the comments, please tell what you know. If you work for uh, SB Foot or Red Wing and you know what the actual difference is, please put it down there so we all know because this is what I have surmised and figured out. And that's why you're watching me because I have the massive boot collection. I can do comparisons. I can show you what they look like. I can tell you what I think, which is only what I think. But obviously... Mule Skinner Abilene. Mule Skinner has more stuff. Look, it's darker. It's been infused with something. You know, we have like chrome tans and veg tans. Some are uh, infused with uh, veg tan is all vegetable or, or natural plant tannins. And uh, chrome tan is whatever chrome is, is, is other is chemicals that they, they tan it with. And they infuse it with a lot of oils, animal fats, things like that. Obviously, the Mule Skinner leather, as opposed to the Abilene, Mule Skinner Abilene, the Mule Skinner has more stuff in it. It's been treated a different way. It's the same leather treated a different way. So we can rest on that. That is obvious. Now I'm going to show you what I got here. Okay. Um, so yeah, you saw that. You saw the 8083, that's the 8083, okay? I'm just going to show you all the boots now so you can see the different rough out leathers. That was my original intention, and uh, after I was figuring out what the difference here was, was just to show you everything I got as far as the... You've seen, I think, all these boots already, um, except for these. First time showing of these, the 8833s. I just got them. I love them. I really love that. Thank you, brother, <laughs> for selling those to me. Um, but I had these resold with a Dr. Soul half sole. And so, let me move my fingers so you can see. That is such a cool look for an Iron Ranger. I really like that. Okay, that's the 8083 and the 8833. The reason that I like these is I just, I really like the light color. There's a, a Maze Mustang, like a, a Red Wing mock that's like a yellow color. I waited a long time to get that. Thank you, my buddy John, for that one that sold me that one. But I just really like the light colors. I like that light tan Hawthorne Abilene color. Okay. Now, they made recently, which came out, which we're all waiting for and super excited, is the 8087 Iron Ranger Slate. Slate Mule Skinner. Okay, so if this was Slate Abilene, I think the gray would just be lighter. And... We don't know unless someone comments and tells us what they put in here to make it Mule Skinner. Um, but they came out with this. And then I also have, I'm not showing it to you right now, but I also have the mock, which is the 8863. This is the 8087 Slate Mule Skinner. The 8863 mock is also a Mule Skinner leather. It's the same leather. They look the same. So, hey, um, just showing you the difference between these two. Um, the thing about it when most of the time when you get a different sole put on Iron Ranger, you can get a midsole put on. See that that layer right here? Um, this is a, a full sole, and this is a half sole. And so it, it has a midsole. The, the, the light line that you see right here, that's just the weld. And I like that. But this one also has 
the welt line, which is, I don't think you can differentiate right there. And then there's a half sole, or there's a midsole, which is what you're seeing in the middle of the half sole. So here is the slate mule skinner. If you haven't seen it, it's beautiful. Look at the triple stitching. The triple stitching has blue right here, blue on both outsides and white in the middle. That's a cool looking boot. If you haven't seen it, if you get your hands on it, I think it's definite a must for every Iron Ranger collection. I also have, and these ones are for sale um, on my eBay. This is the 8810. The reason I'm selling it is I got the two-tone. It's like a, a the, the copper abilene leather up here and then the uh, copper rough and tough leather down here, the two-tone. Two um, <laughs> I really like that one better and I got too many boots. You know, I got too many. So this one I'm selling, but it's really cool. I really like that boot. Look at how pretty that is. It's like a brick red color. They call it copper. Beautiful. Okay. That is the 8810 Copper Abilene. Again, all these are Abilene. And then we have the, which I already kind of briefly showed you, the 8857 which is, Mach, which is the Loden Abilene. Okay, that is beautiful. I love green. You know I love green. So I wanted to also tell you that I think that on their website right now, they still have those, the 8833s. I think they still have these, which is the 8087s. And I think they have these, the 8083s, of course, without my added um, resole on there. So I also got these from one of our brothers over in Europe. These are the, you've seen these before, 8125 8 inch blueberry mule skinner. Bam, baby with one of Dale's Leatherworks, veg tan kilties in there, and some leather laces. Those are highly rare desire. Those are rare, highly desired collectible, the Blueberry Mule Skinner. And then last but not least, the most coveted 8117 Navy Abilene. So here's the Mule Skinner and the Abilene, this, but this is Blueberry. And this is navy, so that's why this one's darker, okay? Even though it's abilene. If this was navy, and this is navy, this would be the darker one, and this would be the lighter one. But this is uh, navy abilene, 8117. And one of you guys was recreating some boots of his own and wanted to know what color the stitches were on this boot. So look at it. They're like... A rose colored or pink or like maybe a light 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 blue but it contrasts with that I think you can see that it contrasts with that navy rough out enough to where it looks oh the stitching looks almost pinkish to me on there um, so that's what I got for you um, I also wanted to oh they they, they the, the <laughs> there's a boot on the site right now Okay, on the Red Wing site, the 8208. Lots of you guys got it. Ron, you look great in them. Um, the Dusty Rose Abilene. Okay, that's the pink mock. And I'm trying not to get it. I'm tempted. Uh, I don't know. But that is a very nice Abilene leather, rough out Abilene in a pink color. You know, I saw, I went and I looked at it in the store. I had to have my hands on it. It doesn't look so pink in the store. It's looks different and really looks different in different lights. So if you're interested in the Dusty Rose, the 8208, go look at it in your closest Red Wing store. Or if you're somewhere where there are no Red Wing stores, at least find somebody who's got them and say, take a picture of it outside, take a picture of it inside, fluorescent lights, incandescent lights, and you can see how it looks. I don't know. Some guys may be against wearing pink. I am not against pink. I got two daughters. I love pink. Um, I'm just trying not to buy any more boots right now, but you know, that's probably not going to happen for long. Okay. One of the last things I want to tell you is how do I treat these boots? What do I do to them? Um, I don't put anything on them. And, um, what I do is I, is I brush them. I had to clean 
one of these there was like a spot on the toe and I have some suede cleaner but the problem when you put different cleaners on suede you pretty much got to do the whole area so uh, on the particular boot that I had that was suede there was a spot and I used a little suede cleaner just a little bit on a rag and kind of scrubbed it and kind of brushed it and got it out and then I could see clearly the little stripe area where I put the cleaner so I ended up just going back and 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 very lightly putting the same cleaner on the whole area and then brushing it and then that went away but what I do on these is um this is a brush this is like I got it at Home Depot okay I, I was I was using it for paint or something but it wasn't dirty it was new in the package when I started but even I've used like a barbecue brush before doesn't matter don't use a steel wire brush it, it, I wouldn't use anything motorized either. I seen guys put stuff on their drills. Um, but just, they got to be brass. Can you see that that's brass? I don't know. It's it's kind of dark, but they're not steel. They're just brass. So after I wear it, you know, I just, I just brush it. See if there's any spots. I go around. Um, okay, this is what I do. Ryan, you were asking me what I do. How would I clean this pair? I clean every pair of boots. When I post on Insta or um, Red Wing, lots of guys ask, what, are all your boots brand new? Yeah, pretty much. I got so many. I, I think my rotation, I wear like three times a year the same boot, and, and that's all I got to do. But every single time I put a pair of boots away, especially after COVID and the weirdness, I'm walking around places, Walmart or whatever, I don't know. I clean them. I clean the bottoms. So what I do, what do I do if I was going to, as soon as I take these off, at the end of the day, I get like a Lysol or Clorox, whatever, disinfecting 99%, whatever, killing bacteria type of wipes. I just get one, okay? I go around it with that wipey, just around the edge, like there, get most of it off. I go around, I take the other one, I go around the edge of it, take most of that off, and then I take that wipey and I clean the bottom. See, look how clean my bottoms are. I mean, these have been, these were used and then I wore them. You know, but they're pretty clean. Then I use that same wipey here, and I use that same wipey here. Now, when I wipe the edge, it gets a little wet here. And if it's wet and you brush it with the wire, the wire brush, it doesn't matter too much. But I just, I just sit them in the garage where I take my shoes on and off, and I let them dry. As soon as the bottom's all dry, I just take it, and I, there's no deep stains, there maybe some stuff. I just, just take the wire brush and I just go over the whole thing kind of not too heavy right around in the welt unless I, there's some dirt there not too heavy around the laces and i just brush it and it just makes it you know it's like with a lot of you know if you're familiar with sway's leather jacket you rub your hand one way and it's lighter and you rub your hand the other way and it's darker so i just get it to where i like it if I see a stain, yeah, I have some specific, they sell suede cleaner in a little bottle. But like I said, be careful. Don't don't be so generous with it. You might even want to, if you're going to do suede cleaner, you might even want to pour it in a little cup or something and dilute it. And then when I apply it, I always get a white rag. Okay, unless you got like a black pair. If you get a black pair, don't use a white rag. A super dark pair, use a darker rag. But a t-shirt or a towel, something that's totally clean. For this one, I would I would definitely use white, and it, I would just kind of dip, and just if there was a spot, I kind of spot clean. But then, say if it was the entire quarter here, I would get some on the spot, and then I'd take my suede brush and kind of try and get the stain out like that, and then I just keep kind of dipping in a clean spot of that rag and just kind of outline the seams. And you know how, what this is when we paint rooms. Okay, say we come to your house and we. You say, oh, you know, I, I got some damage on this wall over here, but I, I don't want to paint the entire room. I don't pay you to paint the entire room. I don't want this one wall painted. You know, and lots of times they'll want, just like I'm trying to do here, clean what, can you just touch up one spot? And it, paint fades when it's old. And um, so I can't always match the paint exactly or with different sheens of paint in order to match the one spot. So what I tell them is if you let me just paint corner to corner on the room, the shadows and the different lights where the, the walls turn the corners, if the paint's really close, no one will ever know the difference. So that's what we do. So that's what I do on here is what I'll do is if I get a spot, I mean, you could try a little spot cleaner, but then if you see a difference, I think the best thing to do is to just get that same cleaner and just outline 
that area. Just like I told you when I did the one with the toe, I just did right around the inside of the mock there. If I had a stain here, I would do, just get it wet with that cleaner all the way around on that same vamp so I don't get some line. And then I just let it, I, I just let it sit and air, I don't blow dryers or heaters, whatever, I just sit it in, it's in my garage, I just let it dry, and then it's after it's all dry, I'll just do that, the entire boot, till I like it. And if I still see that spots there, sometimes when I take them out of the box, I just have like from in the box or rubbing against the other shoe or the lace of the other shoe made a line. Even before I put them on, I just keep a brush like this, right? Where I um, put my boots on and off. Um, but I'll let it dry. And then if I still st see that stain, that spot, I'll go back again and I'll dab a tiny little bit more and I'll, and I'll scrub it, you know? And just keep scrubbing it, let it dry, brush it again. Like I said, I did it two or three times on that one that had the spot on the toe. And then the last time I said, forget trying to spot clean it. And I just did the whole toe and it, the, the, you know, it's like rubbing a spot, making it bigger, but making one spot cleaner or that with a, a rough out leather, making it look a little bit different by putting the cleaner on it, even out the cleaner. That's my point on that. I think that's all I got for you for today. So we still have shirts and patches available if you're interested in that. Um, but today I just want to tell you that, um, the earth is a great place to live and our families have been here for thousands of years as far as we know and um, we want the earth to last so I don't know all the science behind climate change but what I do know is respect so if you're a self-respecting person you probably clean yourself uh, before you go out around other people so you're not stinky or having dirt and stuff sweat smeared all over you it's the same thing with our earth man let's try and keep it clean all right let's try and uh, uh, have our what do they call that carbon footprint be smaller um, let's do whatever we can we were talking about that today just about recycling is you know we're not into here in this house recycling and going and getting the money for cans and bottles and everything but we don't want to just throw them in the garbage so we want to give them to other people they're going to recycle them so let's just do our best to respect ourself, to respect other people, and to respect our planet Earth, our home. Uh, William, Sh William Shatner, Captain Kirk, who's 93, I read this letter he wrote. He went in some one of these rich guys are shooting people into space, uh, going around the backside of the moon and coming back or something. He went up there, checked things out, Captain Kirk, and said, it's black, and it, it's black like death. And he looked back at that tiny, fragile-looking, amazing blue ball. And he said, that's our home. We got one home. Who knows? I mean, they, they say, you know, the next solar system with a sun that could possibly have a planet in the sweet spot is so far away, any organic organism would die before it got from one place to the other. So who knows how long till we're going to be able to beam ourselves up, Scotty, to a different planet or whatever. So we got to take care of this one. So... I, I know that we're going to pass away, you and I, before it's all gone. But why don't we do our best to, to be the gardeners of this beautiful garden planet? So let's respect our planet. Let's respect other people. And let's respect ourselves. Because all of that is a part of love and happiness. Have a great day from the Carpenter's Office. Love you.